tests is different under the new law. Well, it's a developing story in Springfield after what police are calling a random act of violence. What they say a 17 year old did that has them facing some serious charges this morning. From WDTN, the station that's working for you. This is 2 News Today. Good Monday morning to you. Thanks so much for starting your work week with us today. I'm Lauren Wood. It's great to have you here. I'm Kelly King. Zach Pitts has the morning off. We are in for a hot and steamy couple of days here in your forecast. Storm Team 2 meteorologist Jamie Jarosik is tracking that rising heat and humidity with your forecast first. And Jamie, today is also a day to stay weather aware. Good morning. Yeah, not only are we tracking heat and humidity, but we also have the potential for some severe storms as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. Uh, for the most part, uh, the first part of the day looks like it'll be fairly quiet, even with a little bit of sunshine, but we heat up fast. We're expecting highs near 90 and then developing thunderstorms in the afternoon with high wind possible as well as the potential for hail and an isolated tornado and even some very heavy rainfall. Our forecast is for temperatures in the morning to be near 72 at 8. By noon, we really heat up to 85 quickly and then 5 o'clock 88 with some scattered thunderstorms possible. And again, any of them could be severe. Here's a check of our satellite radar loop. We've had rain kind of around the Miami Valley, but not really in the Miami Valley over the past few hours. We have mostly clear sky. We're going to take a look at your forecast and when we'll see the best chance for rain coming up in just a few minutes. In your time saver traffic this morning, we're looking great on those roads. No reports of any major issues. You can see we're all green on the map. The minor issue we are tracking, we've been tracking it for about the last hour, so it should be in the cleanup stages. 35 westbound at Gettysburg Avenue, there's a crash which police have been responding to. Giving you a couple drive times here, 75 southbound from downtown Dayton to Springboro, 14 minutes, 75 northbound from the 7075 interchange to Piqua, 19 minutes. So we are moving right along at highway speeds in the 6 o'clock hour. 675 at Colonel Glen Highway near the base. Traffic is starting to build. We'll get even busier, though, during this hour and through the next one. Happening today, constitutional or permitless carry goes into effect in the state of Ohio. Senate Bill 215 allows anyone who is legally allowed to own a gun to carry it concealed. You will no longer need a permit and you won't have to undergo a background check to carry concealed. You also don't have to take the previously required eight hour training class. Despite those changes, many local gun ranges will continue to offer concealed carry training, hoping to prepare people better if they choose to carry a concealed firearm. Yes, the laws have changed, but educate yourself. Don't just go out there and just start carrying a gun, thinking that, that everything that you do is just about carrying that gun and okay, now I've got the freedom to, to, to carry this gun. The new law also removes the duty to notify, which means you don't have to tell law enforcement you have a gun unless they ask you directly. Governor Mike DeWine is also expected to sign a bill today that will lower the number of required training hours for teachers who want to carry firearms. House Bill 99 reduced the current peace officer training of more than 700 hours down to a maximum of 24 hours for all armed school personnel. 2 News reporter Caroline Morse has our continuing coverage of the legislation. 20 United States Senators, including Senator Ron Portman, announced a bipartisan proposal agreement to address school safety, gun violence, and mental health services. The proposal mandates a review process for a person under 21 years of age looking to purchase a gun. Mental health records would be evaluated as well as state criminal databases. In a joint statement, Portman says in part, quote, our plan increases needed mental health resources, improves school safety and support for students, and helps ensure dangerous criminals and those who are adjudicated as mentally ill cannot purchase weapons. Most importantly, our plan saves lives while also protecting the constitutional rights of law-abiding Americans. Governor Mike DeWine is expected to sign House Bill 99 into law, a bill that would dramatically reduce the required training hours for school staff. During the Senate's initial review, more than three dozen Ohioans expressed opposition to House Bill 99, including the Ohio Education Association. Take some time to really do this right. Uh, make sure that there is adequate annual notification. Every parent, every community member should know if their district is authorizing their employees to carry weapons. It's a bad idea, but if we're going to go down this path, 
Please don't rush this. That was Caroline Morse reporting nationally a possible breakthrough with measures to combat gun violence. The framework for a bipartisan deal was announced by a Senate group on Sunday, one day after thousands around the country rallied for reform. We will have a report from Washington on the deal coming up later in the show. And to stay up to date with the legislation here in the state as well as nationally, you can download the Two News app. Just scan the QR code you see there on your screen with your phone's camera, and that will take you to a link on our website. To download the app. We're following a developing story out of Springfield this morning. One person was hurt and a teenager is now in custody after a shooting on Sunday night. Springfield police tell us it happened on Hops Avenue just after 5 p.m. The victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. The suspect is a 17 year old from Xenia. Police believe the shooting was random. The teen is facing multiple charges, including attempted murder and felonious assault. New information on a stabbing investigation in Dayton. A man was stabbed and robbed on Point View Avenue just before 9 p.m. Saturday. The victim was taken to the hospital. Police have a description of the suspect. That incident is still under investigation. The time now is 6.06 .06 on your Monday morning. Still ahead, summer camp season gets underway. We'll show you one unique option for kids who want to practice their skills on two wheels and encouraging reading for children, where a new little free library has opened up in the Miami Valley. We're well, checking out our pollen report. Tree pollen still at a moderate level, but low wheat, grass, and mold count. We're gonna take a look at your forecast and how hot we'll get this week coming up.
You're back with your forecast first. Temperatures this morning are pretty mild. We've been sitting in the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees in Dayton. We've just dropped to 69. It's also 69 in Springboro, still 71 in Wilmington. We have some mid 60s, Troy, Urbana, Springfield, and our dew points are up in the mid and upper 60s, so it feels real sticky out there. And this afternoon is going to be another hot, humid day. Yesterday we made it to 83 degrees. The low was 66, and we did pick up almost two tenths of an inch of precipitation. We're going to take a look at how much hotter it gets through the week coming up in your forecast. In your time saver traffic, no complaints on the roads this Monday morning. We're just cruising right along. 75 looks great from Wapakoneta all the way to Cincinnati. 70 looks good from the Ohio Indiana line all the way to Columbus. You shouldn't have any problems getting to where you're going on time at this hour. Giving you a couple drive times here, 75 northbound from 35 to 77 minutes, 75 northbound from the Dayton Mall area to downtown Dayton should take you about uh, 10 minutes. Giving you a live look, this is I-75 at the Miami Montgomery County line. We are starting to see traffic volume build out there. And from four wheels to two happening today, it's the start of a bike and scooter summer camp. Mike's Bike Park in Dayton is bringing back their BMX mountain bike and scooter summer camp starting today. The camps take place at the 50,000 square feet indoor riding facility downtown on 1st Street. Five different camps are designed for kids from ages 8 to 14 years old and run from three to five days. The camps run until July 29th. A little free library was unveiled on Sunday in Trotwood. The library can be found on East Main Street at the Church of the Brethren. People will now be able to take a book and share a book from the library for free. Members of the church congregation hope this will inspire more readers in the community. I kept thinking about how this is going to impact the neighborhood and what it's going to do for us as we relate to the neighborhood. And it just felt right to be doing it. The celebration also featured a fundraiser to provide books for Ukrainian refugee children and orphans through a project by the Ukrainian Book Institute. The time right now, 6-12. Next on 2 News Today, rallying for reform, the first bipartisan deal announced by a Senate group to combat gun violence. And here's a live look at downtown Dayton in US 35. Jamie says get ready for some uh, oppressive heat. I'm trying to think of a good word. I was thinking <laughs> miserable. No miserable was Steamy. my word. But Kelly likes it. <clears throat> we'll have much more on that coming up. <clears throat>
We're back with your forecast first, checking out our Troy Stouter Center time lapse. It is a fairly quiet morning here in Miami County. We're starting off with a mostly clear sky, dry conditions. We do have some thunderstorms possible today. We'll take a look at future track coming up. A bipartisan Senate group reached a framework for stricter gun safety laws over the weekend. This comes three weeks after 19 children and two teachers were killed when a teen with an assault rifle opened fire at a Texas elementary school. Bree Jackson is covering Washington with the latest. Following mass shooting, after mass shooting, after mass shooting, Senators say they've reached a deal aimed at reducing gun violence. Frankly, what made the difference this time was just how horrified millions of Americans have been. Undoubtedly, there will be some further tweaks we're continuing to meet. The framework would enhance background checks for gun buyers 18 to 21 years old, requiring them to check with local police. Senators also agreeing to help states take guns away from people deemed a threat, close a loophole that allowed some domestic abusers to buy guns despite their violent past, and provide money for school security and mental health. Congress seems ready to reject the vice-like grip that the NRA has had on the Congress. In a tweet, the NRA said, we will make our position known when the full text of the bill is available. Vote them out! Vote them out! The deal comes amid public outcry for action, with nationwide March for Our Lives rallies this weekend demanding change to gun laws. We have the power to uh, vote people out who don't want to pass sensible gun legislation. Ten Republican senators have signed on to the bipartisan compromise, a positive sign it could get the 60 votes needed to become law. I comment on the gun reform deal. President Biden saying it would be the most significant gun safety legislation to pass Congress in decades. That was Bree Jackson reporting. 31 people are facing charges for conspiracy to riot this morning after being arrested during a pride event in Idaho over the weekend. A neighbor alerted authorities of a U-Haul van filled with men in white masks while pride in the park was taking place. Officers arrested the group at a traffic stop Saturday. Those arrested came from states across the country, including Washington, Idaho, Texas, Arkansas and Wyoming. Police also found a smoker, shields and shin guards. Investigators say they are members of a group that formed following 2017's deadly Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. Now, meteorologist Jamie Jarosik and your Storm Team 2 forecast. Well, the earlier you plan a walk today, the more comfortable it will be. It's still pretty muggy out there right now. We have temperatures in the 70s, and as we go through our morning hours, we expect to push up to 78 through 10 o'clock. A very warm 85 at noon, and then in the afternoon, we do get into the upper 80s to hit 90 degrees. And we do expect a lot of dry time through the first part of the day, but as we go into the afternoon, we'll start to see the potential for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. And if that does happen, any of those thunderstorms will have the potential to become strong to severe. So today into tonight, all of the Miami Valley is included in a slight risk for severe storms, which is a two on our scale of one to five. Damaging wind would be the main threat with any thunderstorm that develops. We'll also have the potential for hail, isolated tornadoes, and some very heavy rain. It's definitely a day to stay weather aware. Again, late afternoon, evening into the first half of the overnight. The other story is going to be building heat and humidity. So this is a look at our heat index. The forecast is for those values to be up between 94 and 99 today, and this is not the hottest day of the week. So this is just the beginning. Remind you to stay hydrated, take breaks in the AC if you can, check on your neighbors, keep pets cool, and in the heat, always, always check the back seat. Now tomorrow it gets even hotter. We have an excessive heat watch that will go into effect and likely we will see this upgraded and even extended into Wednesday. So two real hot days in the forecast. Our normal high is 82. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, mid to upper 90s expected. We get some relief over the following weekend, Saturday, Sunday in the 80s, and then we do see some 90 degree temperatures back next week.
Satellite radar loop shows we're mostly clear out there right now, but we do expect those thunderstorms to develop as we head into the later afternoon hours. As future track shows, 5 p.m. getting some of those downpours going with the potential for strong wind. And then another complex may impact us heading into the overnight hours. By tomorrow morning, we're back to dry conditions. We have a ton of sunshine in the forecast for Tuesday afternoon as we continue to heat up. Your forecast today up to 90 degrees. It'll feel hot and humid with those thunderstorms possible in the afternoon, continuing into the evening and first part of the overnight. It'll be muggy with a low of 75. Tomorrow we're up to 96, a mostly sunny, hot, humid afternoon with our heat index between 105 and 110. And that's what we'll have Wednesday as well. Thursday is the next chance for showers and storms. And after that system comes through, temperatures will come down a bit. Friday into the weekend, highs will be in the 80s. You can get the Storm Team 2 weather app. Just scan the QR code on your screen and that'll take you right where you need to go to get our free app. Or you can always check out your hour by hour forecast. In your time saver traffic this morning, we're looking pretty great on those roads. No reports of any major issues at the moment. So if you are heading out the door at 620, you shouldn't have any problems getting to where you're going on time. Nothing to hold you, hold you back or slow you down. Giving you a couple drive times here. 75 northbound from the 7075 interchange to Troy. 11 minutes, also 11 minutes if you're taking 675 northbound from the Dayton Mall area to Colonel Glen Highway. 29 minutes, 70 eastbound from Brookville to Springfield. We are moving right along at highway speeds without any problem spots. This is I-75 at Needmore Road. Good morning, Harrison Township. Starting to see that traffic build. This is typically one of our busier areas since it's just south of the 7075 interchange. I expect it to get even busier through this next hour. The time right now is 621. Still ahead into sports. The Reds put the brakes on their four game losing skid. Highlights and reaction coming your way next. It is 624 on your Monday morning. Here's a live look at Live Doppler 2 HD. Jamie says will be hot and humid today, partly sunny with a high of 90 degrees. You can see some scattered showers out there this morning. You can also expect some this afternoon and the potential for thunderstorms as well. There's a slight risk of severe weather. She'll have much more on that coming up.
Now at 6.30, a big change for international travelers. The COVID-19 guideline that just went into effect for those coming into the U.S. And Independence Day celebrations might be a little less bright this year. The fireworks shortage and what it means for 4th of July festivities. From WDTN, the station that's working for you. This is 2 News Today. Well, good Monday morning. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. I'm Kelly King and I'm Lauren Wood. We have a hot day on tap today and it is only going to get hotter as we go through the work week. Storm Team 2 meteorologist Jamie Jarosik is here with our forecast first. Jamie, they always say it's not the heat, it's the humidity. <laughs> It's going to be both. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. We've got the humidity building. The heat is going to be on and we actually already have some heat headlines for tomorrow. We have an excessive heat watch, which will go into effect. Mm, it said, sounds like it's a full day for me. You said even for you, though, this might be a little much yeah. with this triple digit. With the triple index. digits, it's a little much for me. Yeah, yeah, there are some pool days where you can sit out of the pool, you know, for uh -huh. a while. The, this is going to be a week where everybody's going to be in the pool for sure. It's going to be packed. Uh, we have temperatures uh, this afternoon approaching 90 degrees and not only the heat, but also we have the low risk for some severe storms. So any thunderstorm that develops this afternoon will have the potential to produce damaging wind. We'll also have the threat for hail, even isolated tornadoes, and that'll be especially for the late afternoon hours. So between eight and noon, a lot of dry time with a mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures at lunchtime up to 85, heating up fast. 5 o'clock, 88 degrees. Here's live Doppler 2 HD radar right now. We did have a little bit of rain off to the north and west of our counties, but uh, right now things are looking pretty quiet, not just there, but area wide. We'll take a look at your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. In your time saver traffic, we're looking good. We are all green on the map. That's what we like to see. All clear, no reports of any problems getting to where you're going. 75 southbound from Sydney to the 7075 interchange, 24 minutes. 675 northbound from 75 to 70, 21 minutes. Good morning, West Carrollton. We're looking great along I-75 here. Traffic is starting to build. A developing story on the campus-wide lockdown at Central State University Saturday morning. The campus was put under lockdown as the school received reports of what was believed to be an active shooter. Central State Police responded immediately and activated the campus wide emergency alert system. The lockdown was lifted an hour later and the campus was deemed safe. An investigation by local police determined there was no threat of an active shooter. A person of interest was taken into custody, though. The incident remains under investigation. Tens of thousands rallied in the nation's capital and around the country this weekend, demanding Congress make changes to gun laws. Protests also took place here in Ohio, where hundreds gathered in Cleveland around the steps of City Hall. The event began with a silent meditation as they prayed for the lives lost. Cleveland's mayor spoke out, saying the violence must end. Gun violence is the number one leading cause of death of children across our country. We can't wait for change any longer. Cleveland can't wait, Ohio can't wait, and America can't wait. I was three years old when my dad died. Um, I think my feeling is the NRA wants us to believe that a good guy with a gun can stop a bad guy with a gun, and he was killed by a bad guy with a gun, and he's not here. He had a gun with him, but he's dead. The mayor also addressed gun violence in schools and gun legislation for teachers in the state, saying that he believes arming teachers is not the answer. Now, to stay up to date with legislation in the state and nationally, you can download the 2 News app. Just scan the QR code with your phone's camera. That will take you to a link on our website to download the app. Now to our coronavirus coverage. International travelers entering the U.S. are no longer required to take a COVID-19 test. The change went into effect at 12.01 a.m. on Sunday officially ending one of the longest running travel restrictions of the pandemic. Most recently, inbound travelers, including U.S. citizens, were required to show proof of a negative COVID test a day before boarding U.S. bound flights. Other countries, including the U.K., have already dropped the testing entry requirement. The CDC plans to reassess that decision in 90 days. 
Millions of bottles of baby formula were shipped from Australia to the United States on Saturday. As part of President Biden's Operation Fly Formula mission, a flight carrying 85,000 tins of Bub's infant formula arrived in Los Angeles. Suppliers say that will be enough to fill more than 2 million bottles and will be in Kroger and Albertson stores in Southern California in the next few days. Pain at the pump continues across the nation as summer travel ramps up. The price of gas has jumped to $5 a gallon over the past three weeks. It's now at an average of $5.10 nationally. Analysts say gas prices could go even higher this summer as global factors impact the cost of crude. Americans rushing out to buy fireworks for the 4th of July this year are going to find a limited selection and higher prices because of inflation. Although the fireworks shortage is not nearly as bad as last year's season, store owners advise to start buying your favorites now before it's too late. Jeff Bernthal has the story. Normally this whole table would be bottle rockets. Bottle rockets are a little bit short this year. Jim Myers has been in the fireworks business his entire life. This is our 75th anniversary this year. So uh, my grandma had it before my father. My father ran it until 2005, and I've had it since then. He's relieved this year's supplies are looking good. Our store was really bare after the 4th of July last year, but we got a big order right before New Year's, and we've been able to keep stocked. As you can see, our shelves are full. We've been able to keep stock since then. Shoppers have noticed the difference. When I came by last year, it was like wiped out. Even in June, I was like, what happened? <laughs> Do I have to shop in January or February to get it? Carl Bradley shops early for his son's birthday in June. To beat the crowd, because I think it's going to be tough once it gets closer to the 4th. Meyer says as one popular item difficult to find will be smoke balls. Normally we would have four buckets full of smoke balls back here and we have none. So it's just not something that's that's here and it's not coming in. And the variety of sparklers is not as deep as he would like. We don't have as many of the long sparklers as we normally do, uh, but your, your standard colored sparklers, gold sparklers, and your morning glories are here. But there's not going to be as much selection of sparklers this year either. Meyer says if you can't find the exact item you're looking for, there will be plenty of similar items available. Higher gas prices and shipping costs are adding to the costs and stretching budgets, but that hasn't phased some shoppers. It's a definitely a pinch, the economy, but I mean, it's the 4th of July. You got to you got to splurge. Yeah, you got a splurge on the 4th of July. Time right now is 636, taking a live look outside at the land of illusion. That heat and humidity is going to be building throughout the day today and even tomorrow and the next day. Jamie will be back with your forecast first next. And local families treated to a special night with the Dayton Dragons. The challenges these kids are facing and the fun they were able to have with their families.
we're back with your forecast first. Checking out temperatures in the 60s to right around 70. It is 69 in Springboro, Moraine, Dayton, Beaver Creek, and Vandalia. And outside your window, you'll see a lot of sunshine through the first part of the day with the potential for some scattered showers and thunderstorms as we head into those later afternoon hours. So really beyond 3 p.m. is when chances will be highest. And uh, we are going to be hot and humid. We'll take a look at the details in minutes. In your time saver traffic this morning, we're looking pretty good on those roadways. No reports of any major issues, nothing to really slow you down or hold you back or cost you any extra minutes to your morning commute. Giving you a live look through downtown, this is I-75 at West Riverview Avenue. Traffic is busy through downtown as people are making their way to their destinations, but as of right now, you don't need to tap the brakes and you don't need any extra minutes. If you need to fill up the gas tank, let's check on the lowest gas prices for you. $4.89 at the Costco on Cornerstone North Boulevard in Centerville, 494 at the Murphy USA on West Dorothy Lane in Moraine, and a penny more at the Speedway on North Bechtel Avenue in Springfield. Don't forget, you can check out the lowest gas prices anytime. Just head to our website, WDTN.com. A special day at the ballpark for kids battling life-threatening illness. It's what's working in Dayton. Dozens of families of children with life-threatening conditions from the Dayton area gathered at the Dayton Dragons baseball game on Sunday. This special opportunity is put on by an organization called A Kid Again. It provides adventures for children battling life-threatening illnesses and their families. The kids got a chance to sit in exclusive seats and even got to run the bases after the game. Beautiful ballpark, Dayton Drag is a beautiful organization. Uh, we just appreciated how they were so open to work with us. And our kids, are, our, our families are out, and the session is about to enjoy a wonderful ball game on a wonderful day. More than 70 families took part in the ballpark event. The time right now is 641. Next on 2 News Today, new details about who is expected to testify in today's January 6th hearing and what information they are expected to reveal. And make sure when you get in the car, you tune into Mix 1077 to hear all of your favorite tunes. That's Mix 1077. We're back with your forecast first, checking out our Land of Illusion time lapse. It has been a very nice start to the day here. Some scattered clouds, but uh, pretty quiet weather. It's just very humid. We're going to take a look at when we'll see the potential for rain today coming up in your forecast. 
We turn now to today's January 6th committee hearing. We now know who will be testifying as the committee builds its case that former President Donald Trump is responsible for the assault on the Capitol. Ali Rafa is covering Washington with the upcoming hearing. The January 6th committee revealing a key witness to testify former President Trump's 2020 campaign manager, Bill Stepien. The committee forcing him to testify by subpoena, stating last November that he supervised the conversion of the 2020 campaign operation into a disinformation campaign to overturn the election. That messaging, they say, was then echoed by the rioters. Former Fox News political editor Chris Steyerwalt also expected to testify. I was asked to testify uh, and, I'm, and I gotta go. Steyerwalt coming under fire from the former president after defending the network's decision to call Arizona for then candidate Biden. The first major signal Trump would lose his reelection bid. The president absolutely tried to overthrow the will of the people. Members confident their nearly year long probe has produced sufficient evidence for a criminal indictment. Once the evidence is accumulated by the Justice Department, it needs to make a decision about whether it can prove to a jury beyond a reasonable doubt the president's guilt or anyone else's. Uh, but they need to be investigated uh, if there's credible evidence, which I think there is. Now, meteorologist Jamie Jarosik and your Storm Team 2 forecast. Part of today actually looks like a really good pool day, the first half of the day anyway. We're expecting highs near 90 with a mix of sun and clouds, so hot and humid weather. But we get into the afternoon and we start to see the potential for some developing thunderstorms. So it's a day you want to stay weather aware if you're heading out to the pool. Have your phone there. Have that Storm Team 2 weather app on your phone so you can be alerted if any thunderstorms do develop and move in and if any of them become severe. Dew points very high this morning, 69 degrees. It is sticky, if not uncomfortable. Cincinnati, Columbus near 70. We have some mid 70s off to the southwest. And we're expecting our heat index this afternoon to be into the upper 90s. Our forecast high is 90 degrees. It'll feel like 98. Even worse, Tuesday and Wednesday, mid to upper 90s, the forecast high temperatures, our heat index will go above 105 likely. So uh, that is dangerous levels of heat and humidity, and we do have a uh, excessive heat watch in effect already for tomorrow. Uh, to go along with that, lots of sun expected uh, through the first part of today, so that is going to just make it feel hotter. If you have to be working outside, remember to take breaks in the shade or especially AC if you can. And any thunderstorm that does develop later today will have the potential to become strong to severe. So our severe weather outlook is a two on a scale of one to five, a slight risk for all of our counties. Damaging wind is going to be our main concern today, but we also have the potential for hail, isolated tornadoes, and heavy downpours. Not a whole lot going on right now. It's nice and quiet out there in the Miami Valley, clear sky to the west. So some sunshine through the first part of the day. Ongoing rain to the northwest as that continues to roll east will likely see new development and that's what could impact us going into the afternoon. Here's how future track times it out. Generally quiet weather expected as we head into the early afternoon. But by the time we get to four or five o'clock, we'll see those thunderstorms develop and move in and any of them could be strong to severe. The potential will continue into the overnight. Here's 11 p.m. Another complex dropping in from the north. Once that moves out, we're back to dry weather for Tuesday. We expect a lot of sunshine tomorrow as temperatures begin to heat up even more. Today will be up near 90, so it'll be hot and humid with those thunderstorms possible in the afternoon. Those will continue into the evening and first part of the night before ending. It'll be warm and muggy with a low of 75 and tomorrow we're up to 96. Another hot, humid day with a ton of sunshine expected Tuesday and again Wednesday, hot and humid with sunshine and 97 degrees. In your Storm Team 2 seven day forecast, showers, thunderstorms again possible Thursday and then temperatures will come down a bit for Friday and the upcoming weekend. You can get the Storm Team 2 weather app. Just scan the QR code on your screen. That'll take you right where you need to go to get our free app where you can always stay connected during severe weather. In your time saver traffic, looking pretty good on those roads. No complaints, no problems right now. If you're getting ready to head out the door, the only thing you'll be dealing with is that increase in traffic and maybe some sun glare. So do bring along the sunglasses, giving you a live look here. This is I-75 south of Dryden Road. We are uh, moving along fine in the north and the southbound lanes. I will let you know if problem spots do develop, but for now we're smooth sailing on those major highways as well as those surface streets. 
We are working for you if you're looking for a new job right now on WDTNjobs.com. We have more than 33,000 job postings listed. You have options in industries like education, construction, or HR. We also feature a job of the day. So be sure to head to WDTNjobs.com to start applying today. The time right now is 649. We have another check of today's weather traffic and the biggest stories right after the break. Still ahead in your morning rush, a new law goes into effect in Ohio today for gun owners. The change is coming for when you carry a concealed weapon. At 6.52, it's uh, time for your morning rush. It's the next story's weather and traffic you need to know before you start your day. We'll start with Jamie. And we're starting off with dry weather and some sunshine with scattered clouds around the Miami Valley. It's going to feel muggy with temperatures in the 70s through mid to late morning. We're going to take a look at how much hotter it gets coming up in your forecast. We are free and clear on those roadways. No reports of any issues to slow you down or hold you back on the surface streets or major highways. We are starting to see traffic build. Happening today, constitutional or permitless carry goes into effect in the state of Ohio. Senate Bill 215 allows anyone who's legally allowed to carry a gun to carry it concealed. And you'll no longer need a permit and you won't undergo a background check to carry concealed. You also won't be required to take the previously required eight hour training class that included two hours of hands on instruction. Governor Mike DeWine is expected to sign a bill today that will lower the number of required training hours for teachers who want to carry firearms. House Bill 99 reduced the current peace officer training of more than 700 hours down to a maximum of 24 hours for all armed school personnel. Nationally, the framework of a bipartisan deal on gun control was announced by a Senate group Sunday. One day after thousands around the country rallied for gun reform. It includes a set of proposals to reduce gun violence, according to sources familiar with Senate gun 
conversations and also more rigorous process for background checks for those between 18 and 21 years old. One person is hurt and a teen is in custody after a shooting Sunday night. Springfield police tell us it happened on Hops Avenue just after 5 p.m. The victim was taken to the hospital and is said to be okay. The suspect is a 17-year-old from Xenia and is facing multiple charges, including attempted murder and felonious assault. A campus-wide lockdown took place at Central State University Saturday morning. The campus was put under lockdown as the school received reports of what was believed to be an active shooter. Central State Police responded immediately and activated the campus-wide emergency alert system. The lockdown was lifted an hour later and the campus was deemed safe. The incident remains under investigation. Today will feel hot and humid with a high of 90 degrees. We'll have the chance for some afternoon thunderstorms developing. Any of them could be strong to severe. And they'll continue into the evening and first part of the overnight before ending. It'll be muggy overnight with a low of 75. And then tomorrow is a mostly sunny, hot, humid day with a high of 96. The heat index will be into the hundreds. We'll take a look at your extended forecast next. Pain at the pump continues across the nation as summer travel ramps up. The price of gas has jumped to $5 a gallon over the past three weeks to an average of $5.10 nationally. Analysts say gas prices could go even higher this summer as global factors impact the cost of crude. International travelers entering the U.S. are no longer required to take a COVID-19 test. Most recently, inbound travelers, including U.S. citizens, were required to show proof of a negative COVID test a day before boarding U.S.-bound flights. The CDC plans to reassess that decision in 90 days. Millions of bottles of baby formula were shipped from Australia to the U.S. on Saturday. As part of President Biden's Operation Fly Formula mission, a flight carrying 85,000 tins of Bub's infant formula arrived in Los Angeles. Suppliers say it will be enough to fill more than 2 million bottles and will be in Kroger and Albertson stores in Southern California in the next few days. It's going to be hot and humid Tuesday and Wednesday. Highs in the mid to upper 90s. It'll feel even hotter with the heat index. Thursday will be the next chance for rain beyond today, and after that, temperatures will come down a bit for Friday and the upcoming weekend. Another check on the roads here. We're all green on the map. That's what we like to see. We're smooth sailing on those major highways as well as your surface streets. So if you're heading out the door right now, the only thing you might be dealing with is maybe that heavier rush hour traffic as we get into rush hour, plus the sun glare. So do bring along those sunglasses. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. The Today Show is next on NBC. We're going to continue with 2 News Today for two more hours on Dayton CW. Be sure to download the 2 News app.